On today's show, we discuss Harden's super step back and the Bulls and Thunder's courtside shoving match. Who would make the best all-star captain? Should the Grizz sign Austin Rivers? And who did Dave Yeager compare De'Aaron Fox and Marvin Bagley to? And one more question, who plays defense with a shoe? It's Tuesday, December 18th. The starter starts now. Welcome to the Starters, presented by Jack Daniels, Old Number no. Seven, and Tennessee Honey. I'm Jay Skeets. That's my man Tass Mellis. Beside him, the Aussie Lee Ellis, and over yonder. Well, that's the bearded one. That's Trey Kirby. Hey yo! Hey yo! TK, what's up tonight? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the Starters, and you guys know that pump fake parties are usually a one-on-one -on -one affair, but not last night because the Kings Troy Richards, Troy Williams got not one, not two, Whoa. but three Timberwolves with one well-timed pump fake. Haven't seen a fake work oh. this good since I was playing with my dog, fake throwing a toy. That brings us to today's question. What is the all-time best pump fake? There have been about a million of them, but for me, nothing gets better than Dwayne Wade going pump fake crazy in a pregame warm-up back when the Heat were in the finals. <laughs> this is what it must be like to guard Dwayne Wade. He just keeps faking and faking. You never know when he's gonna shoot and then suddenly you get called for a foul, but we wanna hear from you. So let us know on Twitter, what's the all-time best pump fake? Send us your best tweets to hashtag the starters. We'll hear from you later. Get those tweets in tonight. We got a lot to get to. We got the up down report, fill in the blank, but we start with a little is this news? Trey has rounded up some recent NBA headlines. He's going to pitch them to us like he's Sandy Koufax, and we'll determine whether or not they're actually newsworthy. Trey. Yeah, these are all old timey headlines. The first <laughs> one is from Rockets Wire, and it reads NBA referees admit missing traveling call on James Harden's double step back. Is this news? Yeah. It's news because James Harden keeps getting away with illegal moves because he does it so smoothly. It's hard to call real time when you're on the floor. No, and well, no, 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 hold on, not no, this no. one. No, it's not. It is no, hard. It's not. It still is nope. hard. There's a referee right there. Okay. But his feet are so smooth. He's <laughs> dancing out there, Skeets. Yeah. He's a dancer. It looks like Lee Ellis doing the moonwalk. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I usually would agree with you. With his normal one, just that one gather and big step back that sort of looks like a travel. Some people say it is, some people say it isn't, but not that one. He does it twice. He Wait. does a, he, I joked on Twitter that he was doing an impersonation of Brandon Armstrong, doing an impersonation of James Harden, mm. which is just that, that doot, 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 step, 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 step. They just totally missed this call. That, they did, but we have the benefit of 24 hours later and watching it slow-mo. When you're right there, it's hard. <laughs> okay. and, and he keeps, it's hard and no pun intended. He keeps pushing the boundaries. He just keeps pushing it. And it's really, really hard to call it real time. So the referees have to come out the next day and say, hey, we missed that one. Right. Like they should. Right. And, and they did on Twitter. And yes, it's evident. It's three steps, as, as they said. Three. It's yeah. more than three. Well, yeah, well, one. Well, one's uh, the ready? classic gather. One's the gather, one, one two, three. Oh, that's, that's quick. That's more than four. But, but listen, <laughs> let's give credit to the referees for not trying to sugarcoat this or trying to, you know, spin it in any way. They came out and admitted straight away on Twitter there, yep, travel. Right. Wrong call was made. Because that's important to their credibility. We know yeah. in the last couple of weeks, particularly with the Rockets and the Jazz, there's been some instances where it's looked like some bad calls have been made and the referees sort of haven't really come out and admitted that. But doing that is really good for them, and I think we have to acknowledge it in, the, in this instance, yeah. because it was the right the right sure. call that it was the wrong call that was made. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and the last two-minute report also showed that that was a missed call. That should have mm -hmm. been a violation, should have been a travel. This was just really bad timing for a missed violation on two accounts. One, bad timing in the game, because I think if this happens in the second quarter, maybe this is not a headline, maybe this isn't as big a news. I think it'd still be funny on Twitter, but it's because it was a three-point game with one minute to go. The foul is then called there, the foul also is sort of questionable. Mm -hmm. That's something we've talked about with Harden before. You know, did R Rubio made contact, but did Harden embellish it and stuff like that? So bad timing in the game, but also bad timing because we're talking a lot right now about James Harden and all this stuff that he gets away with. And what does he have on the referees where they just, you know, parade him to the free throw line for all these sort of little tricks that he's got, including travels and some flops and, you know, making all this contact. So it's just... It's a really bad timing, which is why I guess this is news. Yeah, it's taking away from what he's doing on the basketball floor, which is yeah. averaging nearly point. 40 points the last four games, almost 40 yeah. points. A lot of it is from the free throw line because of moves like you just saw, the reaching. You reach, he teaches. Yeah. That happens a lot with James Harden. That being said, he just keeps pushing the boundaries, putting the burden on the official, and I find it difficult to watch him 
just because he lulls you to sleep. He lulls referees to sleep. He lulls fans to sleep. It's, it's, it's tough for him uh, not to get whistles or, or to get whistles. Whatever he's doing, he's doing it right. He's just yeah. doing a good job of it. He's scoring 40 points per game. I think we just have to talk a little bit about the positives with James Harden because he's doing everything in his power to exercise the rule book as, as much as he can. <laughs> he's just going to stop doing. dribbling at some point. He's <laughs> running around, I guess. And he, you know, and he threw a dunk down. Uh, with his right hand, with a monstrous yeah. throwdown. He gets to the rim. He's doing everything, again, that an offensive player can possibly do. And drawing fouls, unfortunately, is part of it, and that's what a lot of people talk about. And he's on a tear right now for drawing yeah. fouls, no doubt. All right, next one here, Trey. Our next headline is from Complex. Kings coach Dave Yeager says he has the next Durant and Westbrook in Marvin Bagley and De'Aaron Fox. Is this news? It will be if it is the next round of Westbrook, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you uh, called it. The, the, the Kings will be on a tear. But, uh, look, I feel a little bit sorry for David Yeager in this instance. Because it's the Kings, and we normally associate chaos there with that organisation and that team, he's just trying to build up his young players and be confident with them and show that these guys are young players who will develop. He said they're going to make multiple All-Star games, and maybe they will. Yeah, but, maybe. of course, when you compare them to two guys who are going to the Hall of Fame, it sort of immediately evokes ridicule from coming from an organisation yeah. like the Kings. But look, Fox is having a fantastic season. Bagley's been good for them so far as a rookie. But of course, when you do compare them, as I say, to these guys, people just automatically say, well, no, you, you may as well compare them to Stockton Malone. They're not going to be that good. Right, right. I, I think this is not news on top of other not news. And what I mean by that is the only reason we got these Dave Yeager comments about this comparison of, yeah, Fox and Bagley are the next Westbrook and Durant is because he came out and gave a little love to Luka Doncic on the Mavs, and people took that the wrong way. They sort of, they, they went nuts about Luka Doncic. And this is Dave Yeager about Fox and Bagley, but I'm talking about before this and why he started to say it, because he said, you know, Luka's great for our league. And he then dropped an unfortunately for us in his statement, and people said, oh, 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 yeah. that's Yeager taking a shot at the King's front office. Because he's saying, oh, we should have taken Luka Doncic instead of Bagley at number two. So then he had to come out and like say, no, 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 we love our guy. And we might have the next Durant, I guess, if he's the Bagley in this situation. So we didn't really talk about the first Yeager comments, yeah. but then... This he sort of has to come out and defend his guys or say he's not, a, you know, yeah, but he didn't need to do office. He didn't need to do that. Well, he, sh he shouldn't have gone back and said that. I, I totally agree. He's right. just compounding yeah. on it because Marvin Bagley was picked at two, Doncic was picked at three. Those two teams played on Sunday. Yeah, Dave Yeager's asked about the star player on the other team. That happens. Yeah, he says Luka Doncic is a great player, and he says, Yeah, but unfortunately, um, for yeah, th it's the unfortunately for us that got him in trouble. I yeah, think. yeah, and so everybody jumps on that little tiny statement. He said nothing negative about Marvin Bagley whatsoever. They were high-fiving like crazy. <laughs> but if he had come out and said something silly about Doncic, then people would have piled on him as well. Because we can all see the potential there in Doncic. So Jaeger was right to say, look, I don't see the ceiling for this guy. I think he could yeah. be incredible. Because So then he needed to, exactly. to put, like, take the ceiling away from Marvin Bagley. That's yeah. basically what Because there's no ceiling for Luka Doncic, so he felt like he had to backtrack. But I don't think there, there's no reason to do that. You're having a great season at Sacramento. Mm. It's just... Let her go. Let it lie. <laughs> All right, final headline here, Trey. Our final headline is from the New York Post. Bulls coach Jim Boylan was in the middle of a brawl <laughs> and couldn't be prouder. <laughs> Jim Boylan. He's the road dog. Uh, is this news? Is he the road dog or is, or is he hacksaw Jim Boylan? <laughs> Which one are we going? You better with? call somebody. Because <laughs> he was pretty pumped to get in there and put like Grant in a headlock. It's weird to see the coach put one of the other players from the other team. Yeah. You know, you see them try and separate, I get, but Boylan eventually comes in there and yeah, just goes straight up headlock, but. This was a this was a weird one. I, you know, it was it was almost a little fascinating that no one got ejected at the time mm -hmm. for this little scuffle because it went right into the courtside seats. But I guess no punches thrown. Yeah, and just guys just started with shoving and all that. And Rob Lopez is. He's angry, though. <laughs> he is an angry man right now. He's sort of, I think, fed up with all of these uh, suicides he's running in practice or push-ups that Boylan's got him doing because this has sort of been a bit of a trend here for an angry Robin Lopez. <laughs> he got into it with a Baca in 2017. And... He's got a great angry face. Though. Yeah, that's the I mean, thing. He's, he's like, you know... Give me back my son, sort of. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's now, I mean, you know, now that he's got the goatee and stuff as well, it's uh, it's it's, the it's great. Go the goatee. <laughs> well, you know, he's, he's got he's got a full head of hair there, you know, which adds to his sort of size, <laughs> doesn't it? But uh, no, Jim Boylan. You know what? I think though he's trying to sort of show that he's one of the guys. You know, he's there for his team. He's going to literally fight for his players. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't surprising <laughs> to to hear him after the game, basically say how proud he was yeah. of, of his guys and. 
despite them losing by 25 and having that's, seven wins on the season. And that's what Robin Lopez got tossed for a few minutes later, just <laughs> dropping the yeah. ball on Jeremy Grant. Right. But I liked how they weren't tossed for the actual altercation because the headline included the word brawl. It wasn't a no, brawl no, whatsoever. No, no, no. It was a finger point or two. Yeah. But a, it, a scuffle. It, I think it's a scuffle because yeah, we yeah. saw some foreheads so this, touching. Yeah. Okay, this, this is how... This is how gruesome it got. Yeah, there was a forehead to forehead contact. Yeah. If we're going to slow her down. <laughs> but that's about it. There's that's Stephen all. Adams coming in to be the peacemaker. You don't want to mess with Stephen Adams in there. He'll, he'll just hold people away like two kids fighting. You know, yeah. Have, their, and have their hands on their heads and they're swinging at each other. <laughs> Watch the goaties. <laughs> not really news. Definitely not a brawl. That's for sure. All right, we got lots more still to come on the show tonight. When we return, Devin Booker gets a little revenge. Again, mm. Dennis Cantor will explain that more. The Starters is presented by Jack Daniels Old Number no. 7 and Tennessee Honey. Back with the Starters time for some fill in the blank. TK. For the first time all season, the Suns are on a three game win streak. They're so hot, it reminds me of something hot. <laughs> Nonetheless, that third win came against the New York Knicks, which afforded Devin Booker the chance to quote tweet an old Dennis Cantor tweet, trashing the Suns with his own zing, pick and roll at double zero every time. Got him! Fill in the blank. Booker's Cantor clapback was blank. I'm going to speak the language of the uh, millennials yes. and go with an emoji only. Ooh, <laughs> the crying laughter, LOL. Because that's perfect from Devin Booker. He was obviously sitting on that, waiting for his moment, and then executed the uh, quote tweet perfectly last night. He even threw a little emoji in there, the sort of yeah, uh, SMH. Slapping the, yeah, slapping the uh, nice. and so, This guy you know, dropping acronyms. Oh, I know, I know, it's great. <laughs> and uh, there you go, LOL. He was waiting for this moment, and that's why I wrote well-timed, because mm. they won their third straight game. The Phoenix Suns won three games in a row, the first time in a year and a half that they won three games. It's odd to see the Phoenix Suns winning basketball games like this, just stringing them together. And DeAndre Ayton, after the game, was so pumped. His rookie season, we won three games in a row. He didn't think that this would happen. He was running around yeah, the basketball court excited. like a little kid. Look at that seven-footer go. Um, I'm going to disagree with you guys. Oh. Yeah, and I love Devin Booker, but I think his clapback here was a little underwhelming. Mm, you've really turned on No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a De'Aaron Fox fan. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, a little underwhelming because he had 11 months, 11 months to come up with the perfect response. He knew he was eventually going to be playing Cantor mm. in MSG. He had a great game, and he just comes with this. What do like, you want, man? Well, and here, it's like expecting? it's low-hanging fruit, first off. And it's Cantor. He's, yeah, okay, he's horrible defensively. We all know that. Yeah. Devin Booker. Not that great at defense either. Not that great. And I don't know. I, I think you got to go with the Photoshop where you're handing back that L to him too. Like, you know, become a Photoshop boy. Mm, I think you've got to advance it like he did. <laughs> you, you just said our game plan simple. was just like, we're just going to pound it in against but, you. But you know what? All that said, maybe it happened like in the locker room. It didn't even cross Booker's mind. Maybe. He hadn't even mm. thought about Cantor. And someone was like, hey, remember when Cantor said that and gave you the L? And then he just fired it off. Mm. Then I, I disagree. Little, then I, I give it ready. a little bit more credit. <laughs> okay. Disagree. All right, next one here. Devin Booker, you're welcome to become a Photoshop boy yeah. anytime you want. <laughs> we'll See you in April. <laughs> Still feels like the season just started, but guess what? Come Christmas Day, you can vote on All-Star starters. The leading vote getter in each conference will be named All-Star captain for the All-Star draft which will indeed be televised. We're already talking All-Stars, guys. Fill in the blank. The best All-Star captain would be blank. Giannis, and here's why. Mm -hmm. Remember in the offseason, Giannis, he rejected the idea of working out with like LeBron James right. and Carmelo Anthony. He wasn't interested in that because he's got that Mamba-like <laughs> mentality. He's got to pick someone, though. He no, he's got that Mamba mentality where he doesn't, you know, he wants to go up against those guys. He doesn't want to be their friend. So it would just be Giannis versus the other 23 All-Stars. Ah. <laughs> he wouldn't pick anyone. He'd send a message. He says, I don't want to practice with you. I don't want to play with you. Maybe unless Middleton's mm. in the mix. Maybe yeah. he makes the All-Star game. He takes him. Otherwise, it's Giannis versus the world. And I'm, I'm watching that. Well, I'm going the opposite end here. I'm saying Joel Embiid because I think he would make this a perfect event on social media. You know he would love to get under the skin of someone. So let's say it's, uh, let's say it's LeBron and Giannis as the captains. And Durant's there. He's not picking Durant. He's picking someone who might go last instead. He wants to create that sort of drama and that controversy. He'd be perfect. Yep. You want some things happening on social media? Take the villain, Kevin Durant. Ooh. People don't oh, like, people don't like Kevin Durant right now. The petty wars will be a petty. But you know what? He loves <laughs> basketball. So I think he would really, really get into it. 
I think he might turn people. People might hate Kevin Durant right now, but he'd be so into picking 12 guys on his team <laughs> that maybe you'd love Kevin Durant after this. You'd he just Kevin. wants people to play basketball and pick basketball teams. <laughs> it would start petty, but I think I think he could turn some people. All right, let's hear who you guys think. Who do you want as the captains? Let's say for both teams in the All-Star game. Yeah, we're already talking about the All-Star game. Can't help. It. When we come back though, who plays defense with a shoe? <laughs> Honestly. Lee, you got some Austin, uh, Austin Powers quotes for us coming He's back. a Dr. Evil man. <laughs> we are right into the up-down report. Let's see those thumbs. First up, according to Shams, the Memphis Grizzlies are looking to sign Austin Rivers now that he has been bought out by the Suns. Now, nothing is official, and other reporters are actually saying Memphis won't sign him, and that Rivers is receiving interest from four to five other teams. But for the sake of this, let's focus on the Grizzlies. Are you guys up or down? on Memphis signing Austin Rivers. If this were to happen, you like it or dislike it? Okay. Not I. No, no, not to ask. He would be taking minutes away from Javon Carter. You might know, not know Javon Carter's name, but you will know his Ooh, name. He's a Javon. very good defensive player coming off their bench. He's only played two games with them. He's played a lot in the G League this season. Mm -hmm. He's the 32nd pick in this June's draft. This guy gets after it defensively. Two games, and look at all these defensive highlights. That's because he was the defensive player of the year last year in college. This guy gets after it, Javon Carter. He's solid. Uh, and Austin Rivers, that's exactly the type of minutes he would be stealing from. I, I'd rather the minutes go to him. Well, certainly Javon is a better defensive player, but uh, I think for a veteran presence on the offensive end, particularly as we know, Mike Conley missed last night's game. He tends to miss a couple of games. It doesn't hurt to have another veteran yep. there. He's been to the playoffs last and He's a tough competitor. He doesn't have the greatest stats in the world, but he's someone who can at least provide some sort of steady hand for them if they need it in the case of emergency. Yeah, he does play a little bit of defense, can give him a little bit of bounce uh, getting to the rim and between Javon Carter, Shelvin Mack, Marshawn Brooks. They're guys that have been doing their job, but I don't think that that would be a downgrade going to Austin Rivers. Hmm. Might be a little bit of an upgrade or just another option. He could definitely help out there. Again, uh, I guess Rivers is excited to hear that there's interest from four or five other teams, so we'll keep our eye on that and see where Austin lands. All right, next one. Taj Gibson, he lost his shoe on a post move early in the first quarter of last night's Kings-Wolves game, but that didn't stop the savvy vet from playing a little defense on Bielitsa there <laughs> while holding his shoe in his hand. And then Towns comes over and gets the block, so it sort of helped out. Then he got it back on there. Yeah, slide it back in. Guys, are you up or down on playing defense with your shoe? <laughs> Not going to be any thumbs down. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, traditionalist Whoa. over here. What, you got to use your hands? <laughs> I actually thought it was against the rules well, to I'm have sure anything. sure it is. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so, you know, you should. Yeah, it's you should, against the rules. Yeah, you should actually, you know, disperse it. Put it to the sideline so yeah, that you disperse don't. disperse that shoe. You know, don't. What would have happened if he would have yeah. touched the ball with his yeah. shoe? Because you can't even punch the ball. No, exactly. Right? I, I guess a violation would have been called maybe a, maybe a tech fail. I don't know. But, yeah, uh, it's possible. Yeah. You guys I like just it. think the refs were too surprised to see a guy <laughs> yeah. holding a shoe. They're not going to call it. Do your thing, Tosh. That's it, because that's right, because he picked up his shoe on the other end. Yeah. Again, he lost it when he was doing a post move. It fell off. He picked it up, ran all the way back. Play <laughs> continued. He played a little defense and then, you know, drove Bielitsa <laughs> into towns. It worked out well. Well, had to change his release to get it over that size 17, I'm guessing. I don't know. Todd Gibson probably got a good foot. Extends your reach. Yeah. Probably illegal. But, you know, James Harden's doing some illegal things yeah. out there, too. And he's getting away with it. Yeah. All right, final one, guys. This is for Whitney Medworth out there. Yes. Nike recently released a new set of jerseys for the 16 teams that made the playoffs last year called the Earned Edition. Now, those teams that are playing on Christmas, like your Bucks and your Thunder and your Warriors and so on, they're going to debut them on Christmas. But this means for the second year in a row, Nike will not be creating special, you know, one-time Christmas Day jerseys. Are you up or down on that? The idea of no special Christmas jerseys. I'm fine with You're it. You're fine with it. Yeah, because the best ones were cursive writing, and nobody reads cursive writing anymore. <laughs> the kids don't even, the kids don't write it, the kids don't read it. Cursive is out, Christmas Day jerseys those, are out. Yeah, I'm fine with nice. the regular jerseys. I'm fine with regular jerseys on Christmas Day. It's fine by me. I think I messed up my vote. I also agree that it's not a big deal that there's no Christmas jerseys. These ones were awesome. The script ones yeah. were great, but the three prior to that, which of, it's only been five years, the three prior to that were pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. We had some sleevers. These are good jerseys, and we're going to see a lot of them. It's just that they're debuting on Christmas. Yeah, I, I right. like it because you can wear them on other days. That was the only problem with Christmas Day jerseys. I mean, it was like the That's St. Right. Patrick's Day jerseys that we went through a phase there where people teams were wearing them like 
wasn't even St. Patrick's Day. So when it comes to the Christmas Day jerseys, you can only wear them on that one day. Now you can wear these jerseys throughout the season. Do you think that maybe was a part of it? Why they're not so, making yeah. them? Maybe not enough people were yeah. buying these Christmas jerseys? I don't jerseys? remember maybe. ever seeing anybody with a Christmas Day jersey <laughs> like at, a, at an arena. You know? It's pretty rare. I do have a Joachim Noah one that I oh, bought yeah? on clearance because nobody had bought it. So I was just sitting there on the rack. I was like, I'll take a cool red Joachim Noah jersey, but I haven't been able to wear it. I only wear it on Christmas. Did it have Joachim? Nah, just straight oh. red. Just oh. Straight oh, they did do the first name though, yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's hear from you guys. Are you thumbs up or thumbs down on there being no Christmas jerseys for the second year in a row? We know where Whitney stands on this. She's very <laughs> upset by it. When we come back, Lily, very solid play. Don't go anywhere. Think about like what a stock market does. It's a really efficient way to get to the true market price of an asset. And we do that for the most desired products in the world. We go through it hundreds and hundreds of shoes per day. The linchpin is the authentication, and we've got some, some people that are really smart and really good and can pick off something that would definitely make it past me, that's for sure. Beyond the paint, tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern on NBA TV. I like that guy take a big whiff of that shoe. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta smell it. Yeah, it's, it's real. real. All right, we asked you, what's the all-time best pump fake? You hit us up on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Take it away, Trey. Yeah, some good suggestions. Tonton says the one-hand Michael Jordan uh, ball yeah. fake, of course. Here's another one from Hakeem Olajuwon driving baseline. And he does a little fake, of course. The Chuck, the fake <laughs> golf swing. One of the great pump fakes. There you go. Tonight's pick and play. Lakers Nets. Oh, I'm the only one taking the Nets. Everybody else got the Lakers on the road. Nets are one of the hottest teams in the league right now. Mm. You guys are saying no, it's over. And that game is on NBA TV tonight. Coming up very, very soon. Cover starting after 10 before tip. It's coming right up after us. All right, very solid play. Lee. Yeah, this is a beauty from the Suns, but kids at home don't pass like Devin Booker here until you're in the NBA, because that's a bad pass, but it's good enough for him. And look at that beautiful Ooh, that finish nice. here Ooh. from the Suns. That's lovely. That's what I call a very solid PSA for kids playing basketball out there. Practice. <laughs> the Drop Podcast is up and available to download. We got into so much on today's show, and I gave uh, my top five gift ideas hmm. from the Hallmarker Schlamper catalog. What? The Hallmarker Schlamper catalog. You just gotta go listen to it. It'll all make sense. All right, we got some fan signs. Yes, this one is from Nate, who took his girlfriend to see the Pistons on her birthday. We made a very solid poster for you guys. Yes, you did. Great job there, guys. And this is Naomi and Jason from Australia on their honeymoon. They were at the uh, Staples Center last night. Hey, Chuck. Yeah, Chuck, Chuck. the Condor. Great job, guys. Yeah, Keep great signs. Coming. All right, that's it for us tonight. We'll see you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. The second sign was better than the first one. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> right. All right, thanks for joining us, folks. And remember, it's only illegal if it gets called. Embrace the night, people.